Hi, I'm Kerry, uh, Kerry Grinkmeyer. I'm a retired financial advisor. Uh, today is November the 5th, 2021. Take a look at this picture. This was taken on November the 5th, uh, 1966. This is my anniversary, my 55th wedding anniversary, and that's a picture of Nita and I walking down the aisle on a in the in church, St. Thomas, I believe it was, in uh, Indianapolis, Indiana. Had, had 55 wonderful years. Well, some of them have been a little difficult, but that's marriage. What I want to say, and, and, and I guess the emphasis of this and what I said, we don't always get it right. I got that one right, uh, I, I'm happy to say. But that isn't always the case. Sometimes we get it wrong. Yesterday, I did a video on Zillow. And I, I in that video, said that uh, Kathy Woods of ARK Invest bought a more Zillow. It was one of her top 10 holdings, but she bought more the day that Zillow announced that they were going out of the iBuyer business, that they had made a huge business mistake over the past two years, and they were, go they, they were getting away from it. Well, Kathy came back and then sold more than what she bought, on Tuesday, she bought, she sold on Wednesday. So she corrected her mistake. But the importance there is to understand the people that we respect as understanding the stock market, understanding their business, don't always. They get it wrong. I would ask you to look at this chart of the S&P 500, and you'll see the dot-com bubble. Everybody believed that anything that had dot com attached to it was going to the sky. It, it, it was going to be, and, and I was a financial advisor, and my investment advisors were telling me, put your people in, in these dot com, put them in strategy graphics, put them in the mutual fund new dimensions. It's loaded with these companies that are doing everything computer. Well, they got it wrong. And, and, and we, if, of, if investors were the ones who suffered. They still got their bonuses, but they got it wrong. Then look forward to, to the subprime crisis. Michael Burry, uh, Michael J. Burry at, in 08 was seven and eight were saying, this is wrong. This is going to go. This is going, but the market didn't believe it. The market didn't believe what was in front of them. And then go even further forward. And uh, I remember in July of 2019, I saw an interview with Warren Buffett and Charlie Munger, and they were saying this debt that we're going into, this that the, the fact that we took our nation in in um, from from four trillion dollars in debt to twenty trillion dollars in debt, uh, th th this market is going to collapse. Well, I followed Warren and Charlie's guidance, and I got out. I went to 75% cash, but they were wrong. That isn't what crashed the market. The market was crashed by the subprime crisis. Now, I was smart enough to realize that McDonald's is going to come back. American Express is going to come back. Valero Oil, a lot of these stocks are going to come back, as is Amazon, Google, and Micro. And I went all in. Well, I made 68% in 2020 off of my investments. So they don't always get it right. So... At, along the same lines, let me show you this, this uh, chart of Tesla. I didn't get it right. I sold my Tesla at $7.95, and you can see where it went from there. So we don't always get it right. So what do we do? Okay, if, if, if we want to play this game, Wall Street game, how do we move through it if we know we don't always get it right. That's what I wanna to talk to you in this video today. That's what I wanna share with you, what I've learned and how I invest knowing we don't always get it right. And I'll be right back. Best of Us Investors presents Kerry Griegmeier. So this morning I pick up the Wall Street Journal. And on, on the front page, I see this little chart here, that, and the headline over the chart is trade gap widens to record. And what it tells me here is that our trade deficit in uh, 2021 has jumped to 
round off $81 billion. $81 billion. Well, what does that mean? That means that we have bought $81 billion more of goods and services from our suppliers, our other countries, than we ship to them. So in your life, that means that in the first half of this year, you spent $81 billion more than you had come in. Well, how long could you survive that way? <laughs> how long could you and your family survive with an $81 billion trade deficit? Difference between your wages and your expenditures. I don't think it can last long. I, I think, and then I go to the second section and I see a graph here and it says, market implies possibility of at least three interest rate increases in 2022. And they show a chart that indicates that, yeah, we're gonna have three interest, what's that mean? That means the cost of my debt service is, is going up uh, at least three times in the next year. That's inflation. If, if, if it costs more to borrow money from a corporation that supplies you milk, they got to pass it on to you. That's inflation. Then I go over here and it says uh, consumer price index uh, changes from a year earlier. It, it goes up 5.4%. Those of us who are in Social Security got a 5.4% uh, raise as a result of that starting in 2021 or 2022. So I see that. And then I see that the stock market is at all time highs. Uh, I see that all of the exchanges are at all time highs. Inflation is going up. And yet the market continues to go up. Does that make sense to you? Go back to the first before the break. And remember, they don't always get it right. This is another case. That reminded me of a song by Meatloaf in 1977 on his Bat Out of Hell album. And in that, there's a song called Pleasure by the Dashboard Lights. And, and Meatloaf is doing his thing, and the young lady he is with makes a statement, what are you going to do, boy? What are you going to do? And that's where I'm at as an investor. What am I going to do? The stock market's at an all-time high. Uh, everything's just the S&P, the Dow, the, the NASDAQ, everything's at an all-time high. And yet, our trade deficit is at a $81 billion. Interest rates are going up. Uh, we don't have enough employees. Our supply chain is broken. And yet, the market keeps going up. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to play that game. Okay, let me tell you what I mean by that. Let's, we just finished the World Series. Atlanta won the World Series. And so I'm at, I'm at the ballpark and I'm invited to play in the game. I'm invited to go and play against the Atlanta Braves. No, no, I'm not going to do it because I know I can't beat them. But what I am going to do is take out my chessboard and I'm going to invite them come into the stands and sit down with me and let's play chess. I'll beat them. I'll beat them. I'll bet I can beat every one of their Atlanta Brave players. Okay? So what I've done is change the game. And that's what I want to do. And that's what I want to instruct, help you figure out to do relative to the investment markets. Don't invest in today. Invest in tomorrow. Invest in the companies that are going to change your life. Now, we know that Tesla is going to change our life. I just got out too early. I got out because of China, and we can talk about that, or you can go to some of my other videos where I talk about that. But really, the game, the chess game I'm playing with them is that I believe the most important thing to you and me and everybody else who walks this earth is our life is our life expected. It's not an electric vehicle. It's not a new Pop-Tart. It's not a can of sugary drink. It's our life. 
And so with that in mind, who's changing that? Are you familiar with genome sequencing? Are you familiar with genome editing? Are you familiar that I know that I'm going to die of cancer? Hell, my mother died of cancer when she was 29 years old. My father died of cancer. My daughter died of cancer. So I know that I have within my body a mutation within my genes to give me a propensity to, for, to die for cancer. I also know that I can learn that if I get my genome sequenced. I know that there are companies right now working on putting a needle in my arm to put CRISPR into my body with a cassette attached to it that will take that, which, that will correct that mutation in my genes so I won't get cancer. I know that. That's my chess game. That's my king. That's my king. And that's what I'm going to win this game with. And I'm not playing for baseball. I'm playing chess. Well, what's, what's my queen? What's my queen? My queen is the metaverse. I know because I experience it. I know how the data, the uh, data revolution, the internet changed this world. I experienced it. I saw it. I know that the metaverse is going to change this world. I know that I'm going to be able to go to a Taylor Swift concert and, and, and me and 1.8 million other people, and we're going to be able to experience it as if we were there. I know that I'll be able to push a button and, and pay an extra $20 and go up on the stage and sing with Taylor Swift. I know that. So I'm going to invest in it. I know that at some point, you're going to be able not to watch this video, but you're going to join me right here, and you're going, you and I are going to sit and talk. And, and we'll do the video, and there'll be a crowd of other people who want to be a part of it. And maybe what it is, I get paid for letting you into my world. I don't know, but I know it's coming. And so that's the game I'm playing. I'm playing for the stocks that are going to change my life. I know our supply chain is broken. I know that the reason we have a $81 billion trade deficit is we're a consumer society. We became the accidental superpower when we became the manufacturer for the world. But then we gave it away. We, we said, here, China, make our tennis shoes, make our socks make our semiconductors. We gave it away, but we got to change that. We got to bring the manufacturing back to the United States. It does it, is it going to happen? It has to happen. Our national security depends upon it. We have to do it. How's it going to happen? We can't compete with labor, so let's don't. Let's 3D print things. Let's do use robots. So what do I want to invest in? I want to invest in 3D printing and robotics because I know that's what's going to happen. I'm playing chess I'm with them. I'm not playing today's investment market. I'm playing chess and I can beat them at it because they don't know how to play chess. They're on a 90 day cycle. Look at the stock. You see a stock drop 7%. Just go look and you'll see what they're reacting to is their last earnings report or the last earnings estimate report. They're working on a short base. Don't play that game. Take them to chess and you'll kick their ass because they don't know how to play. Okay? So we know, we know that we need to be in genome sequencing, genome editing, 3D printing, supply chain, the metaverse. Now, what's the next one? Well, there's a good chance it has something to do with global warming. Mm -hmm. that, that means electric vehicles, amongst other things. But that's how you beat them at this. And you've got to look at this and say, you can't spend $80 billion more than you got coming in much longer. It's, it's got to, it's got to, look, look at the charts. Um, we're, we're w way out of line. And then look back and see what happened the last time we got out of line. 
That was the subprime crisis. And then the time before that, that was the dot-com bubble. We're there again. The baseball game's going awry. But let's play chess. Talk to you again tomorrow.